Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about learning to cook, bake, craft, DIY, and do all kinds of good stuff with as little money as possible. So if that's what you're looking for, click subscribe and stick around. Oh, and be sure to click the little bell that comes up after you subscribe, so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Okay, so today's video, my mom's going to show you how to make her famous old-fashioned stuffed cabbage. It's so good. What you'll need is three pounds of ground beef, about one and a quarter cups of cooked white rice, two large eggs, two medium heads of cabbage, about 64 ounces of, sa of sauerkraut, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, six cans of tomato soup, and some water. Okay, so now let's get cooking. Okay, to start off with, we the, for stuffed cabbage, we're going to cut around the core and loosen up, take that core out. So this way, when we put the head of cabbage into a pot of boiling water, the leaves will tend to separate a little easier. Okay, we're now going to place the cabbage into the boiling water. And as I said before, we're not putting it in the boiling water to cook it all the way through. We're just softening the leaves up so that be they become pliable and easy to roll. And you kind of have to keep pushing them around in the water. I try to get the core down because that's the thickest part of the cabbage. So this will take a few minutes before we can tar start taking the leaves off. While the cabbage is simmering, we'll add our ingredients. We've got one medium onion, finely chopped. We'll add that. And then we have one and a half cups of cooked rice. We'll add two eggs. Okay. Then next we have Worcestershire sauce. We'll do two tables tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> this really is an optional ingredient. I like to add it, it gives it a little more flavor. And then we salt and pepper to your taste. And then comes the messy part. We mix all of the ingredients together. You could use a wooden spoon, but I've always used my hands. How long have you been making this? I have been making this uh, dish for, I would say, maybe about 25 years. And my children always liked it. My friends always wanted more. So I'm hoping that you will all like it too. While I'm mixing this, the cabbage is in the war boiling water and we leave it in there, not to fully cook it, but just enough so that the, uh, the leaves become tender enough to be able to uh, cut them off Then we'll let them cool off a while and we'll take the big core and just slice the bottom part of the core off so it lays flat with the cabbage leaf and we can start to roll them and this is pretty well mixed now we're just waiting now for the cabbage leaves 
Well, I forgot one ingredient, so forgive me, but we'll add it now. You take half a can of the tomato soup. <laughs> and we'll mix that through some more. This makes the meat a little moister and it's not so uh, hard when it's fully cooked. It gives a little bit more flavor into the meat. So, Right now I'm testing the cabbage to see if the leaves are starting to loosen up. We have one that's loose over here. And this one looks like it's ready to come up. And as they get soft enough that I can take the leaves out, it'll be one by one coming off the cabbage. And I'll put them aside to let them cool off so they're cool enough to handle. And one other thing while this is going on, uh, I left out an ingredient that I normally use. Uh, when I'm home, I get kohlrabi and I put a kohlrabi in with the uh, stuffed cabbage to cook which gives a wonderful flavor but it seems San Antonio does not carry kohlrabi so we had to skip that part today where would you normally put the kohlrabi? Uh, just cut it up into um, pieces and like uh, wedges and Put it in with the layers of uh, sauerkraut and the cabbage rolls and it'll just cook fine in there. Okay. We've removed the uh, leaves from the cabbage and uh, now we're going to prepare the leaves for rolling. So the heavy core at the bottom of the leaf gets sliced off and you flip it over and you fill, take a good spoonful of the uh, chopped meat mixture and then we'll just roll the cabbage. There we go, it's the leaf is cool enough now to handle. You roll it and then you poke the ends in. And it makes one tidy little cabbage roll. And there we are, finished product. Here we go, I'll show you another one. Get as much of that heavy stem off as you can. And another thing, the reason I like to use two medium cabbage is so that the leaves you can get almost the same size so when you roll up the cabbage there's not too much of a difference in the size of the cabbage rolls and you don't use all of the cabbage leaves right no the uh, the cabbage that is left over the ones that are too small don't throw them away you can use that uh, to make cabbage and noodles I don't know whether I'll tell you how to make that today or whether that's another cooking lesson. <laughs> but that is very simple to make. And let's remind them, you've been cooking this for how long? <laughs> well, I just kind of took a number out of the air when I said 25 years. But to be honest, and being as you so rudely pointed it out to me, <laughs> I've been doing it for over 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess daughters are allowed to tell their mothers what they think. <laughs> I was nice about it. <laughs> yes, you were. Okay, so I'll just finish rolling this one up. And then we'll get back to you in a little while with when all the leaves are rolled. Because I'm step. sure we don't want to bore you with the whole, you've seen how they get rolled up. And when they're finished, we'll come back. Okay, I placed two cans of tomato soup in the pot with two cans of water. You use equal amounts of water to the soup that you're putting in. Now we're going to put a layer of sauerkraut. 
Okay, we'll mix that in a little bit so it distributed pretty evenly. Now then we'll start placing in the cabbage rolls. We made about 30 to 35 cabbage rolls. And we're going to make a good layer. And once we put the one layer in, we'll put some more sauerkraut. And more tomato soup as needed. Kind of hard for me to judge because I'm in my daughter's kitchen, not my own. And I've got her pots, not mine. <laughs> it all makes a difference. <laughs> okay. Try to place the larger cabbage rolls to the bottom. And another thing, if you do have a little meat mixture left over, just drop it in as you would a meatball. So now we've got that one layer. We'll put some more sauerkraut. And I think we're going to need the other jar. So that was 32 ounces? So yeah, this was 32 ounce jar that we've used so far. And now I'm going to put some from another 32 ounce jar. And we'll just make a good layer of this. Here we go with the next layer. So as you're layering them, tell our YouTube friends um, how easy it is to freeze this. Oh, if you have a small family and you have uh, cabbage left over, uh, it's good to make this on the weekend because it is kind of time consuming. You can always freeze it. They freeze very well. And then during the week you just yeah. During the week you just can heat it up in the microwave or just put it in a pot and let it simmer for a while. Your choice. Okay, we've made a nice layer again. And now we come to some more sauerkraut. I'm going to drain this part of the sauerkraut because there's quite a lot of juice in there. Okay. Okay, we put the rest of the sauerkraut. So actually we used two full jars. 32 ounce jars of sauerkraut. Make a nice even layer of the sauerkraut. And when you go to serve this, it tastes wonderful with a nice big bowl of creamy mashed potatoes. Everybody likes that. Okay. And now we're going to put some more tomato soup, just enough to cover the cabbage rolls. Don't forget, it's one can of uh, tomato soup and a can of water. So, and then we're going to put it on the stove. Now you can cook this in the oven if you want to. I prefer top of the stove. So we're going to do two, you, two cans of tomato soup more. So actually we will end up using five cans. So that's five cans of soup, five cans of water. Okay. That barely covers the cabbage rolls. And now then you're going to let this on the stove for approximately two and a half to three hours. When you feel that the cabbage is tender and you can always take a cabbage roll out, open it up and see if it's done to your liking. So mainly you just got to cook the meat, make sure the meat is... Yeah, the, the meat gets fully cooked through. And um, if you need to add a little bit more potatoes, a tomato soup as it um, cooks, Feel free to use it. 
Now we're going to put it on the stove. Problem. Now we put it on the stove, bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, turn it down to simmer. You can put a lid on top, but every once in a while, come and check it and take a wooden spoon. Don't stir it, but ease it up from the bottom so that it's not sticking. And that's all there is to it until it's finished.